but it's kind of marginal. The old time Mishtex knew how to farm it. They were very careful about how they farmed it by using terraces, by using dams, by developing, there are all these little microclimates here. And so they had different types of corn for all the little microclimates. And even then they had some erosion, but they're very careful about it. And of course, using a lot of, of animal manure to fertilize it and probably uh, uh, human waste. And then the Spanish came and they brought along with them grazing animals, goats, the scourge of the earth. And they let loose the goats and what was great about the goats is that the goats would eat anything and they were a great crop. You get goats, you sell them, you make money. So they spread quickly all over Mexico with cattle. Cattle was very big in Oaxaca back in the colonial days. But of course they eat up all the undergrowth and they eat up all the new trees coming up. And they scar the surface of the earth and expose it to erosion. So that starts things going here. And then another thing that happens, ironically, was the Green Revolution, which happens in the 70s, the 1970s, where and I think it's the USA has hybridized all these plants and found that they can get better yields from corn by hybridizing it and giving you this new kind of corn or a new kind of wheat or a new kind of avocado. And this is going to save the world. All these poor countries in the third world, we're going to take them these plants and then replace their low yield local plants and life will be better. And so, of course, Mexico jumps on the bandwagon. This is a great social works program for rural Mexico. It's always suffering. It's always poor. Let's get them planting this. And Mexico backs, backs the project by subsidizing the seed. Now the trick with the hybridized seeds, for in this case corn, is that it needs a really nutrient-rich soil, like the soil of the Great Plains, to give the yield that it's designed to give. These soils don't have that kind of yield, uh, nutrients, obviously. So you've got to have fertilizers with it, and Mexico backs the fertilizers. And so all the poor farmers here are like, that's great, they're giving us, giving us seed, they're giving us fertilizer, uh, and we're getting good yields. When you plant any soil and use fertilizers, the first few years you get these incredible yields because you've still got your soil nutrients and that's boosted by the nutrients of the fertilizers. But what happens is you aren't, you aren't parenting your soil, you're not taking care of it, you're not feeding it, you're just giving it fertilizers. So it's kind of like one of us living on an IV. For a while there's good medicine in it and after a while, if your body doesn't have reserves, no good. And that's what happened here. And it happened in, in, in all, all, all over Mexico and other parts of the world. The fertilizer is good for a while, but if you don't take care of your soil, <clears throat> it's not gonna last. And about that time, uh, the, the subsidies for fertilizer dry up. You've gotta use more and more fertilizer to get the same yields. And so now you've got all these peasants who are hooked on fertilizer, gotta have it, and they can't afford it anymore because the government isn't giving it to them anymore. Now you gotta buy it at the market price. You know, it was only a five year program to get people started. Now you gotta buy it at the market price. And peasants can't afford it. Corn doesn't pay that much. Corn is a subsistence crop for most of these people. Not only that, but you're using this new kind of form, corn, letting all the old corns go. So these corns that are adapted to these different microsystems, the, the growing season on top of that mountain is very different than the valley we went through. They're all gone and they're replaced with a couple of basic types of corn. They won't grow because you don't have fertilizer. Uh, and, 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 and the fertilizer is sterilizing the land. And you got goats running around and you put all those things together and you start getting this erosion. It gets worse year after year. Once it's exposed, it's like a cut with gangrene and it's very difficult to stop. And so people have found there's nothing you can do here to make a living anymore. They've all gone off to the states. Huge populations in Los Angeles and Chicago. Probably in Houston too. From the Mixteca. There are villages here that are just ghost villages now. Everybody comes back for the village fiesta, which is really important. And the rest of the year it's just old men and women and, and young children. They just keep denuding it and denuding it and denuding it. Because it's good for oranges, it's good for cattle. good for lumber. Yeah. Ok, 
Okay, here's a sign that says Santa Maria Mosolo Tepec Mosolo Tepec Before I had a car, they dropped me off here on the bus and then you start walking. <laughs> 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 they dropped you off here? Mm -hmm. How long's the walk? Takes about an hour. I was all into it. I was 23, 24. Just loved it. Yeah, I'll go walk. Did it. you have a, a, a tent with you or a backpack or just whatever you could find? Come and go. 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 You walk in and do what you need to do and then walk out. There's another trail walking out that's really beautiful. We'll see if the road's open and drive out that way. And then you get a bus back to Nochislan and spend the night there and then the next day go back to Oaxaca. Get the gravel. This that surfaces the road? Yeah, or is it that's it? No, there's uh there's deposits somewhere. They brought it all in with dump trucks. Uh, and they did that four years ago. Before it was just this red clay stuff. And if you would be in here and it would rain, it would be a nightmare getting out. Were you ever stuck there? Uh we got stuck and unstuck. I come in here with a big truck when I buy. I usually buy here once a year. And we were coming out with that big truck. And it was in the curvy section up ahead, and there's a ditch like this, and the back tire just got caught on the edge of that ditch and <laughs> slid right in. What's mm. this thing here? This, these two large boaters on each side of the road. The, the hills? Oh, it's just, uh, it's part of the landscape. House. Uh-huh. Hey, Eric, what time did we start out from Oaxaca? We probably left around noon. So you said it's been kind of a while since you've been here? Uh, no, I came and bought pottery here, I guess, middle of last year. And, and who do you ship to for your sales? Uh, the major customers, Jackalope Incorporated in Santa Fe, here in Santa Fe and Los Angeles, I guess, Colorado, and then there's a guy in uh, Arizona who's a wholesale distributor who buys and resells my stuff and rugs. His main thing is rugs. All over the Southwest, he's got a couple of vans. Runs around and sells it. And then another store in Southern Arizona. But I'm on my way out of pottery. I've been doing it for 10 years and it's time for someone else to take over this job who's got new energy for it. And I'm off into the world of tourism which is great fun. <clears throat> Ask you to tell me again. This bald hill right here is where this pre-Hispanic graveyard is. That hill is covered with shards and uh, remnants of, of what must have been arrowheads. And in fact, you find some whole arrowheads up there. And bones, jaw bones, femurs. They don't like you walking around there, not because they care about the fact that it was an old graveyard, but because they think there's gold up there or something. Is it your money? Nice day here. Not ice cold at all. Glad to see that. This is gorgeous weather. I never knew what a Tierra Caliente was till you told me. I, I heard about it in songs and stuff, but, but this is Tierra Caliente? This is what they call it? No, no, this is, uh, no, this is Tierra Fria, Tierra Caliente. There are lots of regions in Mexico that are called Tierra Caliente, and it's the lowlands of whatever region. But there's a big Tierra Caliente in the Huasteca, where a lot of these songs come from, which is okay. north and east of Mexico City. It's wow. called Tierra Caliente. What's that? Uh, the, the water supply from this tank, or to this tank, actually to and from. We pump it up from down there somewhere.
not to get philosophical, but here we were using the state-of-the-art world technology, which is the web, to end up in a remote area to study the traditional the way it works. ways. I'll see. We were wondering when you were going to come back and get this. Anyway, we're just stopping until we're going down to the next house. Qué bueno que está aguantando la luna y yo dijera que ya se acaba. No, porque cuando está sombreando. No, y lo que tiene, lo que tiene, sí. Qué bueno, qué bueno. ¿Cómo si ya se había Sí, no, pues yo dije ya no va a ver. Si yo pensaba que ya no iba a venir. No, ¿cómo crees? Digo, pues mejor que lo venga a traer para acá porque si no de repente se va a venir ese cerrito. Ah, está bajando la tierra como está bajando la tierra. Cuando llueve se baja. Se baja. Está bajando, está bajando. Le digo, de repente se va a romper o qué le vaya a pasar y luego. Pues en un par de semanas vengo. Vienen unos amigas, amigos para visitarme y vamos a venir y me echan la mano y en un ratito. ¿no? Sí. Está bien. Bueno, pues con su permiso vamos a ver qué hay aquí. Sí, pasa, sí. ¿Cómo están todos bien? Sí, sí. Qué bueno, qué bueno. Now that is traditional functional pottery at work. <laughs> no, that's not what. See. Do you mean Houston or Vietnam? Vietnam. <laughs> Dad told me that she will eat every part of a pig. Well, love. Really? Yeah. She loves pork. Well, that's another Mexican bathroom story. <laughs> You've had that happen too? Till die. Tell Dad. This happened sure in Don Luis. Huh? You don't want to know if you love pigs. Where? In Pinotepa, Don Luis. But it happens everywhere. Yeah. Well, basically, you go out back in a, in, in a village to take a dump, and they've got a little place. And you got to fight the pigs off with sticks. See, in India, they're if nicer. They, they wait lunch. patiently yeah. for you to finish, and then they come in. They're yeah, well they're trained in India. Those are much less trained. <laughs> And uh, then they had the pig on the feast day, and it's delicious. Buenas tardes. Yeah, no, it does taste good. It's great.